Hello guys, welcome back. In this video, let's explore the rectangle light in the Unreal Engine software. Unreal Engine is basically used for game uh, design and development. So uh, first of all, rectangle light is used uh, for any light source which is uh, basically big in size or which is like area. Um, the classic example of uh, area light is a television or a movie screen or sometimes uh, any LED signboards or digital signboards which are backlit from uh, the screen. So light coming from a bigger area, any light source you see uh, in that case, you can use rectangle light. And apart from that, when you want to create interior lighting um, and uh, you can use for uh, windows, which is basically portal lights in some 3D applications. So instead of portal lights, we can use a rectangle light here. So obviously it has got some size right now. Uh, I have just uh, I've just set up a simple scene here, which is basically a plane. OK, uh, I just uh, parented this uh, plane and you should be able to see that is uh, uh, behaving like a, a more a screen, a TV screen and the light coming from the TV screen and you could see that similar colors there. OK, so the image what I've used here for the light uh, is also used for the plane for the emissive uh, shading uh, by which you're getting that colors uh, for which are there on the screen. So you use any other blue color image or wallpaper, then you get that blue lighting here. So how I achieve and all that I'll be uh, share, uh, discussing in this video. So I've got this rectangle light. I'm going to delete that. OK, and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let me hide uh, this plane here. OK, uh, let me just go to the light section and then generally see here we have rectangle light and then I'm just creating this light. Uh, you can if, uh, like any other object, it has got a transform node, which means you can move that light anywhere. You can uh, rotate that light. You can scale that light. OK, so if you could see when I'm scaling this light, there is no uh, impact on uh, the final result. Let me try it once again and see you should be able to see there is no change in that light here. And uh, the reason is we have the width and height options. And if you carefully see, uh, we have we got we got the width and we got the height height for the light here. OK, so if I click this buttons here, the light will reset to its default size. So I'm going to move this light and then I'm going to rotate it uh, facing down like that. So you should be able to see the door angle here. And when I'm just uh, controlling the uh, length here, you should be able to see that uh, that's becoming more or less like a focused light. OK, so we have the length of this uh, barn door, which is actually uh, behaving like, OK, you're making that light to constrain into that particular range. So as the length of the door is lesser, the area light is showing up its area shadow effect and it's be becoming more softer by nature. And we got the angle that is also really important when it comes to making up this uh, hard light. OK, so you can control this. And the next thing is, if you could see here, we got the width. You can increase the width here and you can increase the depth also. Uh, this adds more uh, character to the scene, especially when you're doing some nice cinematics and um, this kind of uh, light in setups will make it more dramatic. OK, so I've got this uh, barn door and barn angle, uh, sorry, barn door angle and length. So angle is generally controlling the open and close of the barn doors and the length is controlling the size of it. So uh, the next thing is we have this uh, source texture. I'll come there in a bit. Uh, but we have something called color so we can choose any color we want there. So I know uh, pink is not a very natural color, but uh, you can try picking some warm colors here and then you get that nice um, warm, warm tint. And then if I just go with the blue again, you get the cool tint here. However, you can just uh, explore this option here called use temperature and then uh, in use temperature. OK, let me reset this to white uh, or if you feel that uh, the color is not by default, I mean, you don't know the default color, just click this button, it changes to white. So we have this color temperature option, but the color of the light is controlled by the temperature. And here 6500 is the Kelvins. OK, so when I reduce this, the light turns more warm. And when I increase it, the light turns more cool type. OK, so you can choose that here. Uh, we have this option called effects world, uh, which is going to switch on or switch off. This feature can be seen in a lot of 3D applications and uh, it is sort of uh, uh, initially, you don't want the light to respond to uh, the scene and then you connect that light with only one object. It is when you're doing complex light linking, this would be a very best option. So uh, in simple terms, right now, you can just switch it off or on. OK, 
and you want the shadows uh, from that light or not you can switch in again uh, again i told uh, sometimes when too many lights cast too many shadows the real time rendering uh, is going to be um, more complex in terms of computing so uh, sh- us- usage of shadows is like um, sometimes avoid it so people when they put fill lights and all they avoid using cast shadows so yeah you can switch off the shadows if you don't want that to happen and uh, we have the intensity right now it is in cd which is nothing but candela uh, light is measured in candelas and lumens okay so if i scroll down here uh, the u- intensity units is uh, candela unitless is like a multiplier okay so we have 5000 intensity if i put that to let's say 10000 it means you are uh, doubling that intensity so it's a multiplier for you and then you have uh, the light measured in lumens Uh, sometimes when you want to do a realistic lighting uh, let's say you want to recreate a lighting of a bulb so just go and check the specifications of that bulb you will have lumens uh, or candelas whatever or luminance flux uh, units so you can take that value and apply it here if your scene is uh, in real size or real world sizes and you get the same light simulation of the real world so that is where uh, you can preferably change your uh, intensity units okay and um, we have uh, the source texture uh, so for that what i'm going to do firstly i'm going to reduce the uh, length of this and uh, i mean the band door let me put it to 0 and then put the width to 100 and height to 100 and then i'm going to rotate it 90 degrees okay uh, so let's say let's um, let's say if, uh, here the dozy uh, has got the uh, led here okay so led screen so here maybe you can take the image of that eyes and that lights will come so alternately what i'm going to do is i'm going to take a, a basic shape which is the plane okay and i'm going to scale this plane and i'm going to rotate it 90 degrees okay now i'll go to the content browser i have created a material already just apply it there if not i'll show you how to create that just go to the add and then just create the material there okay i i named it tv i'll just name it tv01 double click it and then in content browser if you got any image with you i have some textures of uh, the dozy i'll dra- drag it there and uh, i'm going to connect that to the emissive there okay now i'm going to um, apply this one and then i just click apply button and then you get that lighting there okay now uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh, select the rectangle light okay you can again increase the width and height to match the uh, tv screen there and then here you can choose that texture and then you should able to see uh, that same lighting from the tv screen is coming and um, i i'll select this plane it's a plane So I select the rectangle, drag and drop onto the plane. Now what that will do, I can select the plane and rotate it wherever I just wanted that to rotate. Now this is more like a um, TV screen, right? So you got a wallpaper of a TV or anything, you drop that texture there and then use the same thing here. And you know this light will also show up in the reflections if the ground has got reflective properties. Um, generally we have depth map shadow related settings here the old school uh, maya um, lighters generally they know what is depth map shadow and shadow resolution shadow bias and all so for them to control we ha- uh, they, uh, you have the shadow resolution which is a depth map resolution scale and then i mean if you scale this one it actually m- makes the shadow bigger uh, i'm talking about the resolution of the shadow map and this can actually slow down the whole process okay so we can explore that here and we have this uh, inverse exposure blend okay this is uh, uh, this value you can put it one and the reason is um, when you're in a game level okay and um, if the camera exposure constantly changing you know there's a relation between the light and your camera exposure so sometimes you can make your scene more bright just by changing the shutter speed of a camera right so to avoid uh, uh, that fluctuations and all you can use this inverse exposure blend which uh, uh, especially in game levels you can use it and we have this uh, option here uh, for specular control so you should able to see
here. So I'm going to select the light and then we got specular uh, scale. I'm going to reduce it. Uh, it's not showing up, but uh, uh, it did. I'll just maybe hide the plane. Okay, let's explore the specular scale. You should be able to see the specularity is being on and off uh, with the specular scale. Sometimes uh, we don't want the lights, uh, light affecting the specularity. That's like a um, sometimes uh, due to specularity, things will more wash out and to bring things to control, we sometimes scale down the specular values. So that's for some more control over lighting. And you have uh, some options here um, like cast shadows, uh, cast static shadows and dynamic shadows and affect translucent lighting and respond to the transmission volumetric shadow. These are like, you know, different material properties you have in scene. And uh, light responding to all that material properties can be more complex as I've, uh, in terms of um, real time rendering is concerned. So sometimes we don't want them to on by default. So you can just explore this uh, values. I'll just go up here and then talk about this feature here. We got static, station and movable. So uh, basically there is a concept called light baking. So lights are base, uh, baked uh, into maps. So it's not calculating now anymore. It has it is just baked that lighting information into the texture, right? So when you are using static, the direct lighting, indirect lighting, both are baked. So real time calculation is not going to happen. This is more suitable for the uh, ambient light. I mean, when when you got a big scene, and uh, that scene um, is not responding to the moving characters. Let's say in the background there is a um, a, a building and the character doesn't go there there would be no interaction with the moving character so there i, I preferably bake the uh, light information right so uh, light direct light and indirect light both are baked here whereas station indirect lighting is baked and direct light is dynamic so that is to speed up things movable where both uh, uh, direct lighting indirect lighting are real time calculated again that uh, puts more weight to your rendering so defaultly it is uh, station Again, uh, most of the options what you see are basically on performance based. So you need to check uh, which one um, is going to work for your scene. Optimization basically. Okay. So explore rectangle light. I'll be sharing more videos in coming days where I could uh, show you the more possible usages of a rectangle light or area light in the matter. And uh, there's a saying that area light creates area shadows and these are more uh, render challenging shadow types or computational challenging shadow types they are more complex so type of lights what they use is also uh, important when you're trying to optimize the scene uh, so um, if you got any questions please uh, put it in the comment section i would like to answer them and uh, uh, if you want uh, if you want any other topics to be discussed uh, let me know i'll be sharing that videos too